Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you all uh, for the support, for the opportunity. It is always such a pleasure to, to be here and to meet with all of you. It is really the highlight of the year uh, when we are able to meet with the research group. And I think this uh, research was such a wonderful opportunity and yeah, really grateful for being here. Now, the last time that we met was um, in Warsaw in the summer. And at the time, we were talking about the content of parental authority. And I remember during the workshop when we were talking, one of the things that we discussed was how our legislation differs throughout the countries, how the terminology itself differs. Uh, you know, in some countries, it is referred to as parental care, parental authority, parental power, parental rights and responsibilities, parental custody, right? So we were talking about this, and it kind of occurred to me well, that's an interesting topic. Why is there such a diversity when we talk about essentially the same institute? Is it really needed to have so many different terms? Is it possible to unify it or not? And right now, I'm not talking about the content of parental authority. I'm just talking about the framework around it, which is the terminology itself. So parental responsibility is one of the key questions of family law. Uh, what to call it and how to approach it is the question that I will propose. And looking at various countries of the world, even if we just look at various countries, various member states of the European Union, we will see that there is no clear consensus. Ultimately, regardless of the label attached, I think it is very important to highlight whether we call it parental care, parental responsibility, parental liability even, um, it is important to highlight that the driving principle has to be the best interest of the child. And um, the question that I will explore in the next few minutes is whether it is possible or even feasible or even necessary to unify this institute uh, across different national legislations. And does it even matter how we call this concept as long as the contents are up to par? So this is what we are going to talk about, or I'm going to talk about, uh, in the next uh, few minutes. So parental responsibility in its most generic definition means all rights and obligations towards the child and his or her assets, right? It includes the whole panoply of parental rights and duties. And um, the term that we use to address this institute, of course, is very diverse across the EU and across the world. Um, and when I was looking at how other countries approach it, I kind of have to admit that, you know, my own country, Slovakia, is kind of underdeveloped in this sense because the way we approach it is not the best. So this question is particularly important now because Slovak family law is currently undergoing a recodification, hopefully very soon. So we have a great opportunity to introduce new terminology and uh, perhaps unify and bring a little bit of logic into this system, which it currently sorely lacks. So in Slovak family law, we currently operate with the term parental rights and obligations, which on the surface sounds like a good alternative, an acceptable alternative for parental responsibility or parental authority. However, I have to say that Slovak Family Act, as you can see on the screen, currently divides uh, it into rights that belong under parental rights and obligation and other rights and obligations of parents and children without any rhyme or reason, without any logic behind this division. So it was really not the best solution that we currently have in uh, Slovakia. So um, it brings a lot of confusion into the legislation. So in Slovakia, it's not just a terminological issue, but also a systematic one. Now in uh, Slovakia, as you can see on the screen, under the Slovak Family Act, this is what you know, parental responsibility is. It is a constant and consistent care for the upbringing, maintenance, and all-round development of the minor child, representation of the minor child, and the administration of the minor child's property. Now here I would like to add that maintenance I don't think should be belong into this category because of the specific uh, properties that maintenance obligations have. However, this is what uh, current Family Act in Slovakia entails, uh, which I don't think is correct, it should not be the case. Now, the development of family law itself has undergone many significant changes 
in Slovakia, and the terminology that we use has also changed significantly. Originally, we used the term parental authority, which changed in 1963, and there were several reasons for this change to parental rights and obligations. Um, the legislator reasoned at the time, back in the 1960s, that there have been changes in the way we view the relationship between parent and child and the social mission of parents and their role in the upbringing of children has to be highlighted rather than you know, parental authority, which highlights the sovereign position based on power and authority with regards to the child. So it is interesting to note that the same principle to change the focus from the Institute of Power to another aspect of parental uh, relationship was recommended by the Committee of Ministers of the Council of Europe, um, and it is the recommendation on parental responsibilities. And this recommendation refers to parental responsibilities as a collection of duties and powers which aim at ensuring the moral and material welfare of the child, in particular by taking care of the person of the child, maintaining personal relationships with him, and providing for his education, his maintenance, his legal representation, and the administration of his property. Now, um, even though in this recommendation we see the shift of focus from the position of power, parental power, to the position of parental responsibility, we still see that the institute is preserved in its entirety. So unlike Slovak legislation, which is very fragmented into individual rights and responsibilities that are kind of haphazardly thrown around in the Family Act uh, and not in one place necessarily, this recommendation, of course, preserves the institute in its unity, which is how it should be. Now, in contrast with the Slovak legislation, the Czech uh, legislation has introduced a single term, Rodičovská zodpovednosť, which then in uh, 2014 was changed to Rodičovská odpovednosť. Um, and I believe this change, and I think we can discuss uh, with uh, Zdenka uh, later um, uh, how this was uh, introduced, but this change wasn't necessarily introduced to signify a change in content, but rather a change in to preserve terminological clarity in uh, Czech legislation. Now, this variety is also clear in other countries' legislations. The legal terminology used in different countries um, takes into account uh, how society has changed and uh, how the relationship between parents and children is viewed throughout history. So for example, in Germany, the civil code in its original version of 1896 used the term elterliche Gewalt, uh, parental authority, and the change in terminology has been made in light of the principles of the best interest of the child to the term parental care, elterliche Sorge. So um, it is you know, apparent that it refers to the Institute of Parental Responsibility, but uses a different term to address it. Now, more recent legislation in Germany already uses the term parental responsibility instead of parental care, uh, more in alignment with uh, Brussels II and other regulations and other international treaties. In Austria, for example, we can see that uh, the original civil code used the same term, uh, and then changed it to obsorge, which is care, parental care. So again, we see that aspect of caring for the upbringing of the child and the child's property. So uh, when this change happened in Austria, it was uh, 1989. At the time, Austria was not a signatory to many of the international treaties that use the term parental responsibility. So the fact that they use parental care is not necessarily distinguishing or, or um, trying to be different from the international treaties. It is simply at the time, Austria was not a signatory to the international treaties using the term parental responsibility. Now, in France, for example, the French Code Civil currently uses the term autorité parental, and um, 
This was the case, which is parental authority. This was the case uh, since 1970. Before 1970, uh, they used a different term, puissance paternelle, which is paternal power. So uh, first of all, we see that not parental power, but paternal power. So we see the position of the man, the, the, the father in that. So the change in terminology, of course, is signifying that as well, uh, the difference between the status of the mother and the father. And the, just like um, Gordana mentioned also, this, this change uh, was pretty recent. In France, the last legislation that differentiated between the status of the mother and the father was from the 1980s, 1985. So, uh, really, it was uh, regarding the administration of the child's estate, uh, the change that happened there was pretty recent. I mean, I'm saying pretty recent because I'm also a 1980s person, but, you know, <laughs> maybe for some of you, the 1980s is, you know, a long time ago. In any case, however, uh, these are very, you know, these are living things, just like languages, just like legislation is. So we can see that change happening. Another country that uses the term parental authority is Denmark, for example. The Danish concept of Föral de Mundehind could be translated as parental authority. And even the name of the Danish legis legislation, it doesn't, they don't call it family act or family law. They call it the law on parental authority. So it really has a prominent place in Danish legislation. Now, the Danish legislator has considered it several times to change the terminology uh, to a more modern parental responsibility. Uh, however, in the end, they decided to keep the term while emphasizing that the concept of parental authority is not just the right to decide for the child, but it also entails a duty to protect and care for the child. So under Danish law, the parents are the holders of parental authority. However, it can be transferred to a non-parent or two non-parents if they are a married couple, but there can never be more than two holders of parental authority. Now, uh, similarly to France and Denmark, Poland also uses uh, the term parental authority, Waza Rodzisewska, uh, which translates to parental authority. So the primary sources of Polish family law interpret parental authority as a set of rights and obligations of parents towards children, which is held by both uh, parents. Now, Lithuania, for example, also belongs to the countries that use parental authority as a term referring to this concept. Now, interestingly, uh, the way Lithuanian legislation deals with that is uh, they explicitly define parental authority. As you can see on the screen, until they attain majority or emancipation, children shall be cared for by their parents. So the child is a subject to the supervision of its parents until majority or emancipation. Parents have a right and a duty to properly educate and bring up their children, care for their health, uh, having regard their physical and mental state to create the favorable conditions for their full and harmonious development so that the child will be able to live independently in society. Now, interestingly, Lithuanian legislation does not stop there because in the Constitution, in 1992, they have introduced a new concept, which is a duty of the parents to bring up their children. So the Lithuanian Constitution since 1992 says that it is the duty of the parents to bring up the children, and I quote, to be honest individuals and loyal citizens, as well as to support them until they reach the age of majority. So a very different way of defining parental authority. So it clearly highlights the moral aspect of uh, you know, upbringing. Uh, when we talk about Spain, for example, Spanish legislation is not uniform in the matters of civil law. First of all, we have the common civil law and then the laws of Navarra, Aragon, and uh, Catalonia. So the Spanish civil code uses the general concept of patria potesta, which is the same in the legislations of Navarra and Aragon. But Catalonia, Catalan civil law, uses the term potestad del pare y la mar. So 
It means that in uh, the Catalan civil law, we see very clearly in the terminology highlighted that it is the power of the father and the mother that they jointly exercise as a function. So, and if parental responsibility is not applicable, is not held by the persons who are the parents of the child, then in Spain uh, we refer to that as guardianship or tutela. Um, now, there are countries that do not use the terms parental authority or parental responsibility, the ones that we have discussed so far. For example, uh, Sweden, um, which uses the term fornad, uh, which is parental custody and uh, guardianship uh, for Mindeskop. So similarly to Hungary, for example, we are using the term parental custody. And then Hungary, Sului Felugelet, again, uh, it can be translated as parental custody or even parental supervision, uh, depends on the translator. Then there are countries like Greece using uh, terms of parental care and guardianship, Koniki Merimna and Kidemonia. So uh, we can see that uh, really we have a lot of variety here. Uh, Finland, for example, uses the term child custody, lapsen huolta uh, and this term includes the daily care and protection of the child and the child's well-being in general. So uh, the terminology is clear also from the naming of the legislative act, which in Finland they call uh, the Finnish Child Custody Act. So we can clearly see that distinction here. Now, uh, when it comes to European legislation, uh, we can see that uh, the recommendation is to stick to the term parental responsibility. And I think it is a pretty interesting feat that uh, there is some kind of unity when it comes to EU legislation. Now, um, I must say, however, that to expect that all countries will start using the term parental responsibility, like the United Kingdom uh, has started, or Ireland has started, or the Netherlands, as you can see, have started using parental responsibility, or even Switzerland, which I think is a very interesting approach to parental responsibility, because Switzerland, while uses the term parental responsibility, it does not just define the term parental responsibility, it also defines the responsibilities of the minor child. And it says that the minor child owes his or her parents obedience. According to how mature the child is, the parents shall allow the child the freedom to shape his or her own life, whether feasible, taking into account the child's opinion in important matters. So we can see that there is a great variety, a great diversity when it comes to terminology happening all over the world in the past few decades. It is clear that more and more countries are moving away from deriving their terminology from the concept of power and authority and moving towards the concept of parental responsibility. Now, there are some critics, especially from Western Europe, criticizing the use of parental authority or parental power. I do not believe that parental authority or parental power should not be used anymore. I do think that they do have a place uh, in the different terminology of different countries, simply because the term parental responsibility is not able to be translated into every single language. Slovak is one of the languages where the terminology would simply not work uh, if we were to translate parental responsibility. So I think it is important to note that there will be diversity because we have linguistic diversity. So different countries are taking different approaches in changing their terminology. And I think um, we have to understand that while we are highlighting the content of parental responsibility, um, the terminology itself can give us a little bit of an indication. An indication on the position of the child in the eyes of the legislator and an indication on historic evolution. You know, why certain countries are using the term authority or power, why other countries are not using those terms anymore. So I think through research we can conclude that there is an immense diversity when it comes to terminology. and. Um, the way we view parenthood, of course, has undergone significant changes in the last 100, 200 years even. And um, the concept of parental responsibility has emerged. And it is currently the 
probably widely, a widely expected terminology because the United Nations uses it, because EU legislation uses it. But I don't think we can expect all of the countries to suddenly change their legislation and change their terminology to include parental responsibility. So I think a great resource, if you want to learn more about this, would be the book uh, that is coming out of this uh, research group, because uh, the um, content uh, of the right of parental responsibility in the legal orders of Central and Eastern Europe provides a great resource into how our countries, people in this research group, uh, have dealt with the terminology uh, of this institute. So I think that is a great point to start, so I would recommend you to read that publication for sure. And finally, parental responsibility, parental care, parental custody, parental liability, whatever we call it, um, the question remains, is it important, is it necessary, is it even possible to unify our terminology? Or do we need to focus solely on the contents? And as the bard, William Shakespeare, once said, what is in the name, that which we call a rose, by any other name would smell as sweet. So I think it is clear that whatever we name this concept, it is important to highlight the purpose the responsibility for caring for and raising the child to be a properly developed adult, mentally, morally, physically, in line with the best interest of the child. Thank you.